Hello again. We're going to continue our section on classification. Uh, last day we had looked in at uh, why we classify things, how we classify things, and talked about then how we divide all living things into different groups. Now last day we concentrated on the vertebrates, but today we want to look then more at the invertebrates. So that's our our plan for today then. Now if we look at all the different groups, all the different organisms, we can divide them up in different sections. We mentioned last day we have protoctista, what they are, bacteria, fungi, plants, and animals. Now then we said that animals can be divided into vertebrates and invertebrates. And last day we talked quite a bit then about we said then about the different groups. We mentioned mammals, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and fish. And hopefully by now you know then the characteristics of each of these groups and examples of each of them as well. Now the vertebrate section is quite an easy section. Certainly you learned about, about vertebrates in primary school as well. The one I will look at then today is on invertebrates. It's slightly more difficult. You can see already that we have got more um, more invertebrate categories here. So we've got these ones here. I'm going to talk about these ones in echinoderms, or the arthropods, cinerians, flatworms, roundworms, segmented worms, and the mollusks. So let's look at each of these in turn then. The first one we have is echinoderms. Now, uh, just a good example of this then is, is a starfish. Now, starfish then, um, if you look at a starfish, it has then lots of lines of symmetry. So again then, we'll talk about then different, different lines of symmetry. You're gonna find in fact then it has then uh, five different lines of symmetry. Now, uh, that's the similar with, with other echinoderms, okay, these five-part radial symmetry. Now also, what else can we say about these? We say that they're armor-plated. Now they're covered in spines. Again, if, if these animals, some of them don't move that, that often, then therefore they need protection from predators. And one of the ways in which they do that is they have these tough spines, and any animal then which decides it wants to eat it, it's gonna have a very difficult time actually eating it and getting past the, the spines then. Now again, we've got examples. We've mentioned, of course, we've got the starfish here. Also, sea cucumber, sea cucumbers, sea urchins, all different examples of echinoderms. So again, that's the first then of our invertebrate groups. Second group, second section of groups we have are the arthropods. Then are actually the most successful organisms on Earth, and that there are more arthropods uh, than any of the ones. So again, let's think about these arthropods. Again, there's a nice little example here of one of our beetles here. Again, arthropods. Um, include insects now they're not all not all arthropods are insects but certainly they include insects and insects are very very common if we think about these arthropods again if you have a look here of course they have this hard outer skeleton uh, we also they have a segmented body that could be a head uh, a thorax and an abdomen and also they've got then uh, also then they've got these joint walking limbs in different examples of those we've got then our crabs an example of here we've got then uh, ticks we've got beetles we've got ladybirds all different examples then of, of arthropods a very successful group of organisms next we have then our the cinderians these ones here uh, again this um jellyfish here is a good example then of a cinderian kind of portuguese man, man of war and other ones we have here too We've one called hydro, we've got sea, sea enemies. Again, these are these are creatures uh, which will live in the sea, and, and again they they move like a like um, almost like a, a wave motion. Then as it, as it goes to, through the sea, then one thing about these as well is that these quite often um, are confused with plastic bags. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, some animals out there, for example, then sea turtles. And um, what they do is that they normally will, will go around and they'll normally eat jellyfish. Now, if somebody then uh, drops a plastic bag and that gets into the oceans, well, that floating in the ocean also looks a bit like a jellyfish. So what happens is the animals like the sea turtles come along, they eat the plastic bag thinking it's a jellyfish. And what can happen, in fact, is they can actually die from it then. So these, these organisms here, again, a few things with those. Again, it, it is, it's a bit like this bag is kind of plastic bag in the in the water then and uh there's there's kind of a bit at the top bit at the bottom again we, this is what they look like then 
Okay, so we've got these these organisms here then. Uh, that was the flatworms. You're going to come across in different kinds of worms, and these these flatworms, as the name suggests, and are in fact flat. Now again, there's a few examples of, of flatworms. Now some of these are, are parasites. Some of these will live inside people. Now, uh, example for example, a tapeworm is an, is an example of one of these. Also, a liver fluke is an example of this too. What can happen, for example, is maybe if, if somebody lives in a farm and they might find then that their, their animals start to get very sick. Now, what might have happened, in fact, is that the animal might have eaten something which contains eggs. Those eggs have hatched, those, those eggs have hatched in, in the worms. The worms then have, have moved around their bodies and have attached somewhere where there's lots of food. It might be the liver, for example, it could be the intestines. But they, they live in there, they grow in there, and they, they take food from the organism, which will eventually kill the organism then. So again, flatworms are, are out there. And again, it's not something you want to come across inside your body. So flatworms are there. Also, we've got then we've got our round worms. Now again, another kind of worm. These worms here. Some of these worms, in fact, then are see through, and you can see see the actual parts inside the worm here. Then now again, then uh, there's no there's no segments in this worm here. It's just a very smooth worm. Then okay, you might find some of these in, in the soil. Uh, but again, this one here, this one here, in fact, then is, is a nematode. Okay, so again, roundworms is another kind of worm then. Then we've got segmented worms. Now, these are the kind of worms you're going to see more often uh, in the soil, and the kind of common garden worms are these segmented worms. As, as an example of a segmented worm here. What they do then, as you can see, is they uh, can sense their way around them. There's kind of no eyes as such, but they, what they do is they can sense their way around them, and, and they, they go through the soil. And uh, they can pick up lots of nutrients in from the soil. And also, they've got this kind of saddle here as well, uh, which they can use then to, to uh, reproduce with each other. One worm will, will, will come in contact with another worm. These parts here will, will come in contact, and what happens, in fact, is they can reproduce sexually using these parts here. Then, those are kind of segmented worms. Examples there we've got our earthworm, we've got our leech, uh, different segmented worms. And then the last group we have in this section here is we have. Now, again, mollusks, a good example of a mollusk is, is a snail. Uh, these ones here, then, they, they have soft bodies. You can see here, we've got a soft body here and a part of the body that can, can be in a shell. And now, if you look at these mollusks here, what they can do, in fact, is they can hide within the shell. If they're frightened, for example, they can curl up within the shell, and the shell really does help to protect them. Uh, again, they also have got this big kind of large muscle, which they can use then to, to move along in. So again, we've got things like snails, We've got limpets, we've got the mussels, we've got cuttlefish, all different examples then of mollusks. Then. So those are then the invertebrates. Now, what I want to do next, well, again, in terms of uh, the invertebrates, I've asked you then to, to make notes on page, I think it's page 7 of the handout, uh, using then page 1, 3, uh, 6 of the textbook then. So the idea really is you need them to, to draw a table, a bit like the one really on page one, three, six, but minus, minus the, the pictures. Uh, so that's what I like to do. Also, though, as well as the notes, I'm going to ask you to have a look yourself and to see if you can find any of these invertebrates. Um, have a look in the garden, have a look in the garage. You might, you might find you might find a few things. You might find some snails in the garden. You might find some spiders in the garage. Uh, you might find some worms in the soil. You might then find some beetles as well. So you can have a look around, see what, what, see what invertebrates you can find. If you do find any, you can take a photograph and send them to me. Uh, and we'll get a few of those up then next week then. So what are you waiting for? Let's then uh, get going.